So before we get started with the overlay and stripping components, there's going to be some terms here that I'm going to be using. I want to make sure everybody's familiar with. The first one is overlay. An overlay generally means this is pavement overlays that are used to restore your wearing course or to add structural support to an existing pavement. And sometimes I may say leveling. What do I mean by leveling? Leveling courses are typically like initial lifts placed directly on the existing pavement to fill in low spots in the pavement. Or they may be like little triangular wedges, wedged areas that are used just to kind of build up underneath a proposed overlay or proposed backbone. And finally, milling, stripping, pavement planing, grinding, uh, many terms for the same thing, essentially removing asphalt. So anytime you're removing asphalt with some type of machine, a pavement planing machine, a milling machine, that's what we're talking about when we're saying milling or stripping or pavement planing, grinding, whatever you want to call it. Basically pavement removal in layers of pavement. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's talk about the overlay and stripping components. Now these are part of the template library and they were developed to assist with overlay and milling applications. They're basically designed to follow along a surface or follow along a component. So you can see on my screen here, I have an example where I have a backbone thickness piece of pavement over here. And then I also have a leveling component over here. And I have a milling component over here shown in magenta. So you can see here, if we focus on the overlay and the milling components, the milling component follows along the existing ground, along the top, and then on the bottom, it follows along the proposed backbone component or proposed pavement. The leveling component over here is used to fill in the gap between the existing and the bottom of the proposed pavement. Okay, so this is where you would use these types of components in your template and on your project. Okay, so these components, they have special properties. And we'll talk about those now. So you're gonna see there's some options. There's a top option and there's a bottom option for these components. So the top option, you can follow a surface, you can follow a component, you can follow the highest, higher of the two. Bottom option, you can follow a surface, follow a component, just like the top. And it also has options to follow the lowest of the two or the highest of the two. Okay, so what does this all mean? Okay, so those three options for the top. When we say follow surface, that means the top of the component will be draped along the top of the target surface. So if you have your active surface as your, your existing ground is set up as the active surface, that's the surface it's gonna follow. Okay, and then follow component. The top of the component will follow the overlay and stripping component or whatever component is defined, that it's defined along. And then we also have follow highest. And that just means the top of the component will follow the higher of the two. So it will follow either the surface or the component. If you take a look at my, my pictures here, you can see the first example, we have just like an overlay or leveling component here. And the, the top option on this one would be set to follow along the bottom of our pavement backbone or our proposed pavement buildup up top. So these components up here are just regular pavement components. But then this one down here would be an overlay component and the top of it the slope would be defined to follow the, the bottom of the proposed pavement. The bottom option would be set to follow surface in this case. If you want it to follow along the existing ground, then that's how you would set that. And then as this proposed pavement goes up and down, that would determine the, uh, the depth of this particular overlay component. We move over to the right here and take a look at this particular image. You can see we set the option for the overlay component to follow the surface on the top. Then we've created the component along the bottom of our backbone pavement here. The top of that component would follow the surface and then the bottom of it would just continue to follow this pavement backbone. Okay, so that's just an example of how you would use these options. So 
Again, the bottom option, you have these four options for the bottom, follow surface, follow component, follow lowest, and follow highest. Bottom, so if you select follow surface, once again, it's gonna follow along the surface, the active surface that you have. You say follow component, it's gonna follow along the component, follow lowest, and follow the low, lower of the two, and then follow highest, again, it's gonna follow whichever one's higher. Okay, so just like the top options, so if you're now on the bottom, okay? So in addition to that, since we can follow a component and we can follow a surface, we also have some options to not just follow it, but also add some additional depth to it so we can go below it, right? So we can go, go below a, com a component at a specified depth or we can go below, go below a surface at a specified depth. So when you see the properties and you see component depth and you see surface and you see surface depth, you understand what those are used for. So Component depth, that's going to set the depth of the bottom below the component line. So whatever you key in there, make sure it's a positive value. It's always going to go downwards. It's not going to go upwards. And then the surface, this is going to be your active surface or any other surface that you may pick from the list here. Surface depth, that's just going to set the bottom below the existing surface if you're using the existing surface. And again, we're not using negative numbers, just keying a value there and it's gonna go below that surface or go that depth downwards. Stripping component, you're gonna see a little toggle here to toggle on a stripping component. This would typically be used when you're doing milling or you're doing something that's gonna be removed. You wanna make sure you toggle that on for quantity purposes. I also have the ability to put in some parametric constraint labels. And these would be used if you want to change the component depth or vary the surface depth and component depth. Sometimes you may have to do pavement feathering where you may want to go down from where you need to transition from maybe one inch to three inches or from zero to three inches or whatever. Um, we can utilize parametric constraint labels with the parametric constraint tool to um, vary those depths over a particular station range. That's what those labels are for. We also have the ability to create alternate surfaces from these components as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.